What's up, Doombots? Tony Scongeli back with a quick review of the event Sunnyside Playtime with the new Downtown Villain characters, as well as a quick look at their kits. I'm going to keep this short and sweet because you're going to find out real quick what I think of this team, this event, etc. But first, let's take a look at the event. So the event's got two parts to it. The first part, Playtime Peril, in which you can use some number of characters let's find out exactly what villains characters at one star in order to complete the task um unfortunately uh, if you don't have chunk this is all you can do this is not chunk how do you get chunk it's a great question let's get chunk That's not chunk. Hey, look. It's chunk. You can farm chunk. Is he better than farming, you know, any of the other characters? No. For this game? No. For this event? That's what we're going to talk about. So. Oh, thank you. So, you need Chunk to be able to progress meaningfully here, and since you can't get him on day one without spending money, this is very clearly a uh, free-to-play, unfriendly event. Does that particularly matter? No, you will eventually get him, and this event lasts about 10 days, so that should be fine. Um, the progress on this event is kind of in line with some of the other previous events, but... If you check the requirements, um, getting this high, this is not quite an event that I would recommend for anybody to engage in early because the deviation from working on characters that will help you progress throughout the game, the standard downtown villains that have been accessible for the entirety of the game, uh, kingdom characters, plenty others, uh, will be more impactful to you and your growth as a player than any deviation you make during this event. Uh, unlike the Elsa event, where Elsa is such a good character that just unlocking her makes you a little bit stronger overall, I don't think that just unlocking these characters is anything meaningful. I don't think it's going to help you progress in towers or anything like that. So as far as this part of the event's concerned, don't go out of your way for Chung. That's just my advice. Play it and enjoy it. Don't worry about unlocking. Don't worry about how much you can you can progress in. Don't worry about getting a three-star chunk with the team of villains that you had on. Um, don't worry. We'll go in, when we look at the characters. You'll see a little bit more why. Uh, and then, of course, Sunny Time Skirmish. Uh, I don't have chunk at all, so I can't even begin this. I let alone a two-star chunk, so I'm just not gonna get it unless I spend money. Which as some of you may know, I'm not spending money anymore in this game for reasons. So now that I've said that, let's look at the characters and determine if they are worth spend them whether or not i would doesn't matter this is what i uh, would do if i cared to spend money so let's take a quick look at the downtown villains because they are here here's chunk the one that uh is now node farmable and accessible in the game what does he do his basic arbitrary amount of damage if this character is affected by haste 50 percent chance to inflict offense down for one turn 15 percent chance to inflict offense down so it goes to 65 whatever 15% chance to convert helpful effect um, if he has defense up. So he's got a lot of stuff going on. You definitely want to make sure that buffs go into him, which the rest of the kit will do. But uh, his basic is yeah, okay. He does a pretty decent amount of damage for what it is. And he's kind of cute. So I got to give him that. All credit. First special, uh, deal 79, well, arbitrary damage. But a pretty decent chunk because, as you can see, I don't have him unlocked. Uh, damage to target opponent and adjacent opponents. Extend duration of one random helpful effect by one on each affected turn. Harmful effect. Uh, yeah. Seems like you already see a whole bunch of harmful effect, uh, you know, trickery, especially with the downtown villains. So this special actually works really good with characters like Demona, um, BBW. Jangles uh, works really well with them actually because they're all going to give out harmful effects and he's just going to make sure that they keep extending. So good on him, useful ability, 
Uh, I don't necessarily think the damage is that important, but if you can get plus one random harmful effect extended to each uh, target, each you know target and adjacent, good attack. It's like an AOE extend. Um, pretty decent. I do like the kit. I think he's a fun character, uh, especially with the existing characters we have. Uh, moving into the next one, on start of turn, 30% chance to remove one harmful effect from this character. On start of turn, uh, if this character is not affected by haste or taunt, perform the following. Gain taunt for one turn, inflict fear for one turn on one random opponent. There's a lot of text here, sorry guys. On start of turn, this character has haste, perform the following action. Interrupt haste and gain defense up for one turn. Gain taunt for one turn, inflict fear for one turn on one random opponent. I don't know what interrupt haste is, I assume it means remove it. Uh, this is a new word that we haven't seen before, so I'm going to just make my assumption uh, based on the fact that we've never seen it. Uh, on start of turn, if this character has taunt, perform the following, interrupt taunt, and gain one haste for a turn. So he just kind of alternates between taunting and being hasted and being taunting and being hasted and being taunted if he has none of the buffs on him, um, which is totally cool. 15% uh, chance to remove harmful effect. Uh, okay, like he's kind of a tanky bruiser character uh not quite amazing but like pretty cool pretty cool kid overall uh in the same kind of conversation as characters like monterey jack and madam Min, we're like oh wow that's really cool uh and then of course passive number two on opponent being afflicted with fear which he does uh this character gains shield equal to two percent of their own max health amount is increased by two percent of this character's max health per toy story villain teammate uh, I don't. I haven't seen shield yet that's mattered, so I don't think this is going to. Uh, Violet gives a ton more shield than this, and it doesn't matter. So he might matter at finished level at seven star gear tier seven, but from right from what I'm seeing right now, nah, I'm not super impressed. Uh, that's pretty much it for Chunk. He's cool. Um, he works kind of well with some existing characters, including I'm not even kidding. He works almost a little bit better with like Randall Boggs and Sully than with some of the other downtown villains, and that could be enough, like, depending on how you're building it out. Uh, moving on to Big Baby. Uh, oh, this is just terrifying. Why? What is? How are you the anti-Jack-Jack? Who asked for this? Run. This is terrifying. I don't want this. Okay. We're just going to run away from this. Uh, deals damage, plus 10% damage, uh, bonus damage per feared opponent. Duh, now we know what this team's going to do. It's going to fear your opponent, and I can see why. I'm terrified. Cool. Decent. Again, a uh, bruiser-type character, so I dig it. Deal up to 88 damage, or a decent chunk. You know, when you see these small numbers, just keep them in track of the other characters with small numbers. Like, the, you know, chunk had 79, so this is a decent amount of damage as it scales up. To target opponent, decrease speed meter of target opponent by 30%. If target opponent is afflicted by fear, afflicts stun for one turn. So it is a reduction of speed, which is always great, unfortunately. And it's really quick, too. Two energy, it's like every other turn. Um, more magic. But if the target's afflicted by fear, afflicts stun, this is the kind of ability where if you can keep the fears running with, like, Headless Horseman, wink, you're going to keep a character stunned every other turn. And if you can do something to extend those debuffs... Chunk. But, like, some characters are just never not going to be stunned. This looks really cool. This looks awesome. It does decent damage, so I would even tier 3 it, because this seems like a big damage, often hitting attack. I like it. Uh, and then deal up to, you know, a little bit less damage to target opponent and adjacent opponents. Damage is increased by 10% per opponent afflicted by fear. Ignore 20% of target's defense if they are affected by taunt. What? This is crazy. It's a very uh, long cool... Not very long cooldown, but it's a pretty above average cooldown for energy so not gonna happen that often but when you do it this is like a taunt killer you know like if, if someone is taunting use this against that guy to hit as hard as you can hopefully they're feared and they're uh, unable to resist it you don't really necessarily want to stun the taunt guy and save that for someone who actually does damage but now that taunt matters because they've nerfed Iago and all the good ways of removing taunt this can be huge I could see plenty of teams is gonna be useful in this, like onward team you can get around on turn one. The second she... Uh, I don't know if it's he or she. I don't care. Uh, the second this baby takes a uh, turn against, you know, Mr. Incredible. Like, 
this is going to remove it's going to hit that guy real hard it's going to hit manticore real hard so i like the kit uh passive uh ignoring that on receiving damage 30 percent chance to perform the following restore up to 72 health and gain offense up for one turn if lotso is a teammate which if you've seen this event so far he won't be uh increase the speed meter by 30 percent chance to activate is increased by five percent per toy story sure this is cool like uh, on a completed team um 30 percent chance is a little low but that's fine here's where things start becoming clear for you in club conquest duration of helpful effects gained it's increased by one so it's a 30 percent chance to do this in club conquest because this only happens 30 percent. this isn't guaranteed 30 percent chance to take these actions So uh, now we know this is a Club Conquest team, because it says Club Conquest. Can you use it outside? Maybe. I don't know if it's hard countering real teams, but like Club Conquest team. And now we can kind of take a look at the team for what it's designed to be, which is yet another Club Conquest team. Okay, let's see what Lotso does for the team. So, basic. Uh, deal up to 30 damage to target opponent. 50% chance to inflict fear, a little bit more damage. Okay, he does damage. Next. Uh, inflict fear for one turn. Ooh, now we're talking. And defense down for one turn. Dig it. On target opponent and adjacent allies. Well, that's a lot of fear. I dig this. Allied Big Baby will assist. I dig this. Big Baby does more damage for fear. This is cool. Uh, one to two additional teammates will assist. Cool. Plus one to defense down. Plus one maximum assisting. So what does that become? One to three? instead of or two to three i'm gonna go ahead and assume it's one to three because come on there's no reason not to it doesn't say total it says maximum so cool you can get the entire team to assist works like big pete if you ever use big pete uh good ability a little bit longer cooldown on this kind of ability than i'd like to see like two or three is where i want to be three is reasonable four is a little bit less push but big damage attack puts the fears on people cool looks good uh now we have a second special or the ultimate Restore 72 health to the two lowest health teammates. If affected, teammates have full health. Instead, apply continuous healing, restoring 90 health over two turns. So that's 45. And, you know, obviously the number scales up. Uh, inflict taunt for one turn on the two lowest health opponents. 30% chance to inflict taunt on one additional opponent. And obviously it just increases the health, much like it increases damage on basic damage attacks. Uh, incredibly long cooldown. Ready on turn one. Uh weird because it does two things you want it to do it puts taunt on characters uh why is it ready on turn one you don't almost ever want to do it on turn one it's a heal that taunts weak characters this is kind of his like oh okay i guess do this then so you always want to lead probably with the special and then maybe a turn or two later if he's around lead with this which implies that he's not going to be great on auto which implies that this is not a war uh, club conquest defense team wink so this is a club conquest offense team okay uh i'm a hugger when this character is dealt damage increase speed meter of each allied toy story villain by 10 percent and an additional five percent per opponent inflicted with fear on start of turn perform the following gain a copy of one random helpful effect from each adjacent toy story villain teammate with its duration refreshed that's his passive that sounds insane right like just think of the toy story villains that you can use and think of the one we haven't talked about yet emperor zerg on the start of his term if he goes before zerg and zerg happens to have you know damage up oh boy zerg gonna hurt real hard uh for multiple turns actually uh restore 72 health to the lowest two health character team including this character oh cool that's nice if the affected teammates have full health continuous healing we're familiar in club conquest grant defense up for one turn to affected teammates to anyone it heals uh, if affected teammate is toy story villain increase health restored by 15 percent per helpful effect on this character i don't see them throwing around too many helpful effects so that's going to probably be spell based uh, they do have some but they're not like the frozen team or that's it the frozen team 
So you're going to lead on spells to give them helpful effects. Off the top of my head, Infinity Sided Die sounds really good right here. So Infinity Sided Die and Headless Horseman seems like the perfect spells for this team. Just, you know, me throwing it out there uh, as you're using them. And his leadership ability, Toy Story Villains, gain 20% maximum health in Club Conquest. Uh, Toy Story Villains gain offense up for one turn and life drain for one turn at the start of battle in Cub Conquest. So if you wonder why Tony is taking a moment to just be silent, it's because uh, I don't know about you. I can only speak for myself. But I don't actually care about Club Conquest. I enjoy it. It's a fun game mode. But when you tell me that the team is for Club Conquest, you're taking my interest level and in what I can use this team for, and you're setting my expectations. You're saying this team is good in Club Conquest. Now, granted, of course, there's always the brewers of us that are like, well, I could technically use these two characters, like I said before, with like Randall Boggs and, and Sully, and always have fear up, and it'll be fun and great, and ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you actually could replace Chunk with Randall and um, it just put Sully on the team and then use Zerg, right? So it's one, two, Zerg, Sully, Randall. Team looks great. Team looks super fun. Is it going to beat the core of the downtown villains? Nope. Is it going to beat the kingdom team? Absolutely not. Is it going to beat Frozen? Nuh-uh. So now we've talked about the three best teams in the game. So what's it going to be? Random other teams you have? Incredibles? Okay. Okay. Like, okay. Like, cool. Um... I don't care. You know, I'm being honest with you guys. Like, I don't care about a Club Conquest team. And if you do, I'm really happy for you, and I'm trying to provide this information to help you get there. Uh, if you're willing to spend however much money it's going to take to max this team out. Because again, it's not about who you can unlock. It's about who you can finish. Six or seven star. If you're not going to do that, don't bother. Like, there's so much more value in getting the downtown villains you can access all the time. If Big Baby was farmable if all of these characters were farmable and this event was just a great way for you to get more of their shards or if chunk and big baby uh, had been farmable for a while yeah that's fine listen they added a new character event to the game it's going to be great work on it when you want but from what i've seen of this team and from what they've told us about club conquest how far are you away from needing an additional club conquest team over a solid kingdom team, a solid downtown villains team that you can farm all the time, a solid wilds team, a solid frozen team. You can farm all the frozen characters right now in the game. One of the most awesome things they've done. This event, uh, my advice to any player, free to play, casual spender, or big spender, don't really waste your time. It's another club conquest team. If you need to have the team to be competitive in your, you know, club conquest, whatever lines you're doing, like, go for it, man. I'm not going to fault you for it, but I just don't see any value in this. Uh, even if I was willing to spend, I wouldn't spend on this team. I would just wait for a better team or maybe an event to come back that I can progress in, unlike the last two events where I uh, can't. Anymore. Anyway, that's my review of the, the event and the team. I think the event is a little bit uh, free to play unfriendly. I think that the team is adequate for what it's supposed to do, which is Club War. So the only question I can ask you to comment below is, do you care? Do you care about Club uh, Dungeon or Club Conquest enough to invest time on this team instead of on the frozen team on the kingdom team on any team that actually does matter because this team just doesn't jump out and bite me uh, but it might for you so comment below let me know anyway thanks guys so much for watching have a good night have a great day i've been tony scongeal and i'll catch you later